What problem are you trying to solve with these? It's a really good question. So you're, here, you're holding Tier 1 in your hands, right? Yeah. Tier 1 for us is the first all-in-one listening system. It's instead of a listening product like a headphone, it's a hearing product. So I wouldn't say we're exactly trying to solve a problem. We're trying to give people superhuman hearing. And what that means is giving you the ability truly to control how you hear the world. So you hear what you want to hear and don't hear what you don't want to hear. So, so these aren't just headphones? Definitely not. Uh, they're you know, headphones plus in the sense that they do stream music. But basically where we started as a company is there was a predecessor product for this called Hear Active Listening. And all it did was allow you to augment the outside world. You could so turn kind of like uh, tin cans with string between them? Uh, I'd say it's like spectacles, but for your ears a little. I like, like spectacles today. Yeah, That's so it's, so it's a little, uh, the first product was a bit of a toy. And the idea was we wanted to give you control over your hearing. And the basic premise behind that is we believe as a company the future of computing is going to happen on the body, right? Everyone's making these bets on the eyes and on the wrist. And we made an early bet on the ears. We believe that in-ear computing or putting a you know, computing system in your ear is going to be the future of how we interact with technology, mainly because voice and audio are a much more natural way to interact with each other and interact with computers. Tapping on a piece of glass is one thing. Me just saying, hey, order me an Uber, or, you know, hey, dude, I want to go to dinner with you, and having a back end just set up that calendar invite is a much more natural way to compute. And, so and, our, and we see that happening with, uh, with Alexa, with Google Play and Absolutely. Stuff. We got very lucky, to be honest. We were building, you know, in a vacuum, very secretly, this product that we consider the first in your computer. And then Apple removed the headphone jack. That was a huge moment for us because we're a true wireless product. So we do stream music, so that's obviously awesome. But also, the rise of voice. We kind of called that a few years ago. And then, of course, with Alexa, Google Home, all these things, it's become mainstream. Well, away from your product, what did you see happening technologically that was leading to this voice? Were there things, because you definitely saw a lot of, I mean, Google's getting criticized, uh, has seen some criticism uh, from the likes of Mark Benioff and others sure. about just jumping on the voice bandwagon. Sure. Um, but it, it seems more like there's a technolo there was a technological uh, uh, wave cresting uh, so for as me, it relates to voice. It's a great question. For me, it was actually more cultural, right? I'm actually not an engineer. My background's in film and music. And what I saw was uh, computers becoming kind of more and more alien. You can think of Google Glass. Right. We started this company right in that moment where everyone's like, people are going to put tech on their faces and wear it all the time and it's going to be awesome. And I was sitting there saying, no, they're not. And then simultaneously, you had this whole movement of beats which was we're going to get people to wear five pounds of plastic on their head and do it proudly. With weights. With weights added to it that had no audio quality but made That's, you think like so, you're spending so the, money more wisely. There were these I, cultural forces happening, and I don't think Silicon Valley was following it as much. They were obviously starting to think about AI and voice, which is a big part of what we're doing. And so we said, look, we think there's a coalescing point of these two kind of, this on-body technology. People use the term wearables. We don't like it because wearables right now are usually commoditized tech that you throw away, gadgets. But on-body tech, truly indispensable computing on your body, that leverages cultural relevance. And for us, that means we've worn tech in our ears for decades. Why not leverage that? And the analog there is the iPhone, right? You know, consumer electronics are, 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 are historically kind of what, what airplanes are to, to big investors, consumer electronics are to other investors, where it's just to say the businesses just inevitably fall on their face. They get inventory sure. problems, they get gross margins, they get sure. uh, compression, and they get competition from uh, 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 companies that don't care about patents and just make cheap copies yeah. overseas. Um, but you've got companies like Fitbit, which have fabulous margins, or sure. Apple, which have fabulous margins, that are very deeply in the consumer electronics space. How do you f uh, make sure you're one of the latter and not one of the former? It's a great question. Uh, we, we pride ourselves on not being a gadget. And what I, uh, when I say the best analog is the iPhone, is there's two big things there. One is Steve Jobs was smart enough to launch a pocket computer and not call it a pocket computer, right? The iPhone was a pocket computer, but he was smart enough to say, hey, people are already carrying com computers in their pockets or phones in their pockets, right. and I'm going to leverage that to get them to carry this new device, the iPhone. Now, it's easy to forget the original iPhone didn't even have an app store. And so it's two things. One is, to dovetail on my cultural thing, we're leveraging the headphone to get into your ears. And we want to build a much larger platform on top of that. But to also answer your question, um, the way we don't become a gadget is you really do have to focus on the software and the back end. And that's what Apple did, right? Not only is the hardware great, but you have this incredible app store. And you have this connectivity to this much more robust content ecosystem and software platform that makes it truly indispensable above and beyond the the hardware. Further, uh, when you look at this business, where are you guys in terms of development? So here one launched today uh, in the sense that we started shipping units. We announced it several months ago. 
Uh, we'll be in Best Buy, AT&T, Brookstone, several big box retailers as of April. And the goal is to really, by holiday, own this space. Uh, no one's doing what we're doing. There's a lot of headphone products. There's now a lot of true wireless headphone products. But we actually have four processors in each of yours. It truly is a computer. And what that allows us to do is the audio entering your ear actually gets stopped and transformed. We're the first product you can wear in your ear and still interact with the world around you. And that's a big deal because if you think about what the future looks like, you probably have a product in your ear that you don't have to take out when you want to have a conversation. And so our product, very specifically, imagine you're on an airplane and the flight attendant comes up to you. If you're wearing any other type of headphone, you take the entire system off your head. With our product, you tap it once, it goes into what we call bypass mode, which is natural acoustics mimicking your exact ears while removing the jet engine. Have a perfect conversation with the flight attendant, tap again, go right back into your media. We're starting to create these really fluid UI experiences that essentially mute, mimic the human sense of hearing and make it more superhuman. And that's how we think we're going to get people to wear this product more and more and make it indispensable.